Okay, so when you're ready, you can open your eyes, come back into the Zoom meeting. <clears throat> Okay, so if you would like to share something or ask something, you just wave your hand. So would there be somebody who would like to share? Uh, Brett is a good sharer. Okay, Brett. Um, I, can you hear me okay? Yes, yeah, we hear you. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think we're waiting for you to pick up one of your guitars, you know? I've, I've written a song. For Bagaban, actually. You have? Yeah. Is this yeah, the right yeah. moment or we do it a bit um, later? No, I, I, I'll probably do it another night if that's okay. Um, oh. um, yeah, I just wanted to share with you, um, I had tranquil moments of peace, which was very different to last week. I took on board or what you actually said and for the whole week, Every day, I've been practicing self-inquiry, even waking moments. So when the thoughts and the feelings have risen up, um, to whom do these thoughts arise? The answers to me, who am I? And I've continued with that all week. And you were right what you said, John, completely and utterly right. And I just wanted to thank you for that because it, it sometimes it takes somebody to tell you things how things should kind of be if you know what I mean and I think what you did was you something resonated within me deep and this last week I've managed to find some equilibrium and find those moments of peace and silence and just then um with that meditation the strongest feeling was silence um and I was able to fit, find that peace within um so I just wanted to thank you for that for last week and it was well, a of course uh, of course, you should, re you should really be thanking yourself, Brett, because yeah. you're the one who was there in your body for the whole week. You were the one that was um, looking and you were the one that uh, did the practice and you got the benefits. So it's not much to do with me, but thank you anyway. So um, I can also say to you, Brett, that since we had contact some weeks ago, um, you've been, I think, every possibility, you've been on this Zoom meeting every mm. week. Mm. And always you're one of the first to share. And you mm. might be interested to know this has a meaning for somebody like me, you see, mm. because I have contact with quite a lot of people. Tonight, I think we're 25 people. And um, what I get without really knowing you, because I don't really know you, I don't know all your mm. things and blah, blah, blah. And what you've told me, I've already forgotten. So blah, 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 you know. Mm. But what I get, what I understand about you is that you have a serious interest, you see. Mm. And so this makes a big difference to how I might relate to you. And we'll mm. talk more about that later tonight, because mm. tonight we're talking about um, you know, this aspect of the connection between the teacher and the student. Yeah. So, and when you express, you know, that you, thank you very much, that's also nice to hear. It's not a big deal, but it's nice to hear. Um, so in this way, something happens between us, you know, mm. and we're only meeting through Zoom, but nevertheless, something fairly deep happens between us. Because I'm always looking for people who are seriously interested. And maybe you've been looking for somebody who can seriously support you. Yeah. And now we met and then mm. something can start, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, I agree. I agree. I think it's, um, we, we go through these journeys where we're all on a journey and we're all falling down the same waterfall, if you like. But I think it's, what's what's really nice is I do feel there is definitely a connection and I felt the energy coming from not just yourself, but everybody else as well. Um, and it, it's one of the reasons I'm, I'm really looking forward to going to India with you. And, um, you know, hopefully I'll come and see you before we go. 
um because i've already spoken with indira about a few things as well so um I'm, I'm looking forward to meeting you and looking forward to meeting everybody else but i think it's there's an old cliche um you'll only get out of it what you put into it um <laughs> and i and i am very very serious about trying to find that route into that peace and that happiness that resides within me so thank you once again okay okay so um there's a couple of things one i can say to you is that um we've now had two meetings public meetings here in the house um, on the last two fridays and there'll be another one this friday yeah and we've set the meeting up with a big television screen and you can come into this meeting if you want to so yeah i will do anybody Anybody listening tonight who wants to have um, a, bit, a bit different kind of meeting on Friday, because this is a meeting with, a, with a people uh, right there with me. So the energy is a little bit different. And that's how I used to do all my meetings. But for four years, I've only done it through Zoom. And I'd almost forgotten the joy of public meetings. So I, having discovered that again, I made the decision that almost every Friday now we will have one of these meetings. Yeah. And um, so if you're not actually near where you can come into the meeting, you can also, like we're doing tonight, you can come into the meeting um, through um, the internet and yeah. anybody who would like to um, can um, can tell you how to do that. In fact, he's probably posted somewhere how to do that yeah so you can come through x you can come through facebook you can come from instagram and there's another one i've forgotten so all these kind of media things you can use to come into the friday evening meeting mm -hmm. yeah I'll and be also yeah so then you, yeah yeah so um so now i've suddenly become a very hard working bloke because i'm also trying to get a the editing of a very important book together so mm -hmm. i'm a little bit um, a little bit under the cosh the other thing i would say to you brett if you're thinking to come and spend time with us in two weeks time where are we on november the 23rd and 4th that weekend mm -hmm. at our house in spain we're having a celebration weekend yeah. everything is free um, you'd only have to buy the ticket there and back, and um, you could have a very beautiful weekend with some of the regular community mm. and lots of new people because we're, uh, from the beginning of next year, we're planning to start a new international community based in Denia, which is roughly halfway between Alicante and um, Valencia, where they had the big flood recently. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's a very nice little town. And um, we have a beautiful house with a totally paradise garden with a huge swimming pool and a fish pond. So, um, yeah, people who are in the meeting tonight, you're very welcome to come and celebrate with us on that weekend, the 23rd and 24th of November. And after that weekend, we're also offering a free um, <clears throat> transformation week. Uh, I think we're asking just to pay for food. Uh, the weekend is you don't have to pay for anything. And then for the week, you pay just for the food. And the, this transformation week is also going to be very, very beautiful, I think. And this is, in a sense, the beginning of this community. So I'm saying this to you, Brett, but actually I'm saying it to, to everybody. Yeah, yeah. 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 No, I, I, the, 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 this Spain trip sounds very intriguing and interesting. Um, and I will definitely look into it and, and hopefully I can come um okay, good you'll find that because Alicante and Valencia are big tourist destinations mm. there are many airlines and pretty good prices you'll probably mm. find yeah. that right now you can come there very uh, less than 100 probably yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. each way 100 or something yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, would, I would definitely look into it, John. Definitely, because I, I think I'll, it's like I said, I think it's something I do do want to meet you, and, and I do want to meet everybody in person. It's very nice doing it via Zoom, but you know, it'd be yeah. nice to meet you finally. So yeah, I, I will take it on board, and I will look into it very seriously, very seriously. Thank you. Okay, and bring your guitar with you. Um, yeah, I will. Okay. There'll be a 
There'll be a mantra <laughs> concert on Saturday evening. And, oh, okay, uh, cool. Yeah, yeah. You might like to jump in and uh, twang your guitar. Twang, twang my guitar. guitar. <laughs> Whatever you, however you, however you say this. Yeah. I pick it. Pick it, okay. Pick I pick guitar. my guitar, yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you, John. Okay, so anybody else like to share about the meditation? Okay, good, Kailash. Okay, are you there, Kailash? Oh, yeah, good. I can't hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I hear you now, yeah. Good. Yeah, I wanted to share my experience tonight. And, you know, over the past few weeks, uh, I've been participating in, in these meetings. Um, I really liked it. And then I'm getting more and more into this process. And, and every time I see that something happens, you know, somehow I, I feel quiet. And, and you know, some, sometimes I have busy days, but what I've been trying to do is to say, to continue to do self inquiry throughout the day. Right, right. And then after a few weeks, then I start realizing, you know, something that you had mentioned before that it's good to meditate, you know, sitting in a quiet place and meditate, but also we can meditate uh, with that that doesn't change. Right, right. And this is what I've been trying to do very, very recently. And I just found it super powerful because somehow, somehow uh, you're more efficient, you know, in the task that you have to do, you right. know, daily task and, you know. Well, of course, you don't, ha you don't have to be in a place that never changes. But the whole spiritual journey is actually a journey towards that place. I mean, what we're going to talk about tonight, where it's, it says right souls attain yani, yana. So yana is a state, well, your most natural state, which is exactly as you just described. I mean, we'll talk about this later, but the natural state is subjective consciousness. So yeah. this is what never changes. It's always there. And it's in you and me and everybody. We've all got this place, uh, which is subjective consciousness. That's our nature. That's, that's the human nature. And then on top of that, we've got all our character, personality, and uh, all kind of philosophies, all kind of desires, all kind of judgments, all kind of conditionings. And because of all that, we can't easily access our natural state. And so what you're doing with yourself is very good, I would say. And, and the other thing that it's very positive, I think, is that I'm finalizing the proof reading of okay. the Ahams Purana Spanish version. And that is right. actually very good because then you can go through the dialogues and then you can right. get a lot through the text. And right. because the Spanish is my mother tongue, then it's, it's very powerful. I, you know, I just start thinking about that. You're you're not definitely your body. You you're definitely you're not your mind. You you just you just are something that is always there. And then when when you start thinking into this perspective, then it gives you a lot of peace. Right. Good. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, uh, I, at the same time that you're reading that book in Spanish, so that we can uh, publish it soon. Um, I'm actually preparing our next book, which is about self-inquiry. And so I spend many hours reading these texts very carefully to decide where does the comma go, where does the full stop go, do I have to change a few words or whatever it is. You know? So th this is also very beautiful for me, and I get very full filled with Ramana. So uh, I think everybody can benefit, actually, from those books and from self-inquiry practice, and indeed in uh, getting involved as we are as a community. I mean, we, we have roughly the same people coming to the Zoom meeting every week. So there's uh, 20 or 30 people that come pretty regularly. 
And so we are kind of family, you can say, and we get to know each other through the Zoom meeting. And this actually supports our journey very much. Yeah. Good. I mean, one thing I would particularly say to you, um, I think most people know that this year in January, from the 20th of January until the 9th of February, we're having a three-week retreat in the south of India, close to uh, the ashram of Brahmana Maharshi. And we have our own little ashram we've been going to for the last 23 years. And I would, I know you have pressures on you in January, so maybe you can't come, but I would just like to encourage you to try to find a way because you're, you're exactly ready for that experience. Coming to this very um, spiritually minded town where there are very interesting teachers and luckily I have good connection with the teachers there. So I will always invite four or five of them to come to the retreat. So you get a taste of the Indian teachers there. And also there's one Western teacher there. I probably, or two actually, I might invite. So, I mean, if you can make it come, please, because I think you'll be amazingly touched from that. But I also understand it's sort of complicated time with your um, relationship and family and so on. So yeah, whatever it is. Um, today we were probably deciding to take my girls to India again. So if your children were like a big adventure, bring them with you. <laughs> <laughs> Kids really like it. You know, it's just, they love India. You know, there's occasionally an elephant, you know, a lot of dogs, all kind of animals around, of course. They, 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 kids love India. Well, we love India too, of course. Good. Okay. Thank you. Somebody else like to share? Okay, here's our friend from Munich. Yeah, he's uh, not exactly good. Munich, but oh, hi. Hi, yeah, you're still be, you're still being Kim, I see. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Be because for the last I don't know month, you've been wanting to come to India. And then today in the car, I was talking about you and we decided that we'd like you to come and then you decide you don't want to come. So, you know, what can I say? What can I say? No, 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 no. I, I, I want to come. I, 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 what? I, I want to well, I don't know. I saw a text from you saying that you can't come to or you won't come to India, but you come to the Christmas retreat. No. That wasn't no. you? Oh, no, no, I'm no. sorry. I beg your pardon. Oh, I've got the wrong name, man. I don't know who that was then. Oh, okay. No, no. I, I said I, I'm really, really happy. I'm very, very appreciate that for the opportunity to come to India. Uh, I still have to uh, ask my wife because uh, <laughs> that's still... <laughs> because she's your wife. Because she's your wife, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I, I'm sure she will. Uh, she will um, be very happy. Be happy to to let me uh, go to India there. So, right. uh, yeah, so I just want to uh, share. It's not very exciting, but uh, I'm, I really um, appreciate uh, the kind of practice to have yoga in the morning and uh, meditation, half an hour and half an hour uh, meditation every morning. Yeah. And um, I did that more or less the whole time since um, effectively almost in Spain. Um, so I'm very consistent with that. So just recently I lost two days because somehow my mattress got lost. <laughs> Maybe it's a bad yeah. excuse. Um, it's okay. But I mean, nevertheless, it's, all, nevertheless, it's all up to you. You know, I don't, I don't get upset if you miss a couple of days, you know. It's only when you miss a couple of years that no, I get worried. Well, I got upset a little bit because I immediately, so on the second day, I made a, call, a, a small accident with the car because I was too rushy with something, right? And I, right. And I realized that I probably would not have done that if, if I, I would kept the, the, the meditation uh, consistent because it was just like... I need to go somewhere and uh, I, I got in a rush and then I didn't took enough attention, a small bump in the car, nasty. Yeah, but yeah, but 
Yeah, I'm really. I think but, I think in the in the, um, in the practice now, and I hope I can stick to it. Good, good. Okay, and in this meditation now, anything interesting? Um, I think I I was able to uh, to spot the most important thing. Because last time it was like, I don't know what the important thing is. Everything is more or less the same. So this time I, tried, I had a, a, the, a kind of roughly throat a little bit. Um, that, that was the first thing. And then the second thing was some kind of uh, emotion or not an emotion. A, a, uh, my head, some feeling in the head. Yeah. Okay. Good. All right. Good. See if there's somebody else. Who else is there that I don't know so well? Oh, there's that girl. What's her name? I've forgotten now. Oh, yeah, mad. Oh, yes, we remember. Okay. Come on. So. For me, happy, you, um, happy you're still with us. We haven't seen you for a few days. I know. Well, yep. I'm here now. Okay. Um, You've been having an exciting weekend. Weekend. Well, I think on Friday I didn't see you. So. Yeah, I was. Uh, I visited my family. Right. Right. My intuition told me that. Really. Yeah. Before I thought we'd never see you again after that. I thought, nah, I bet she's with her family this weekend, and that, that'll probably be the end. You know, we never see her. Like... <laughs> anyway, so you had a good weekend. Did you dare to tell them that uh, you're doing unconventional things? Yeah, I, I just talked with my mom. She already knows that I'm doing whatever I want, and. I also told my father that I will take a long break after I finish my study. So, it's... oh, good. And he didn't collapse on the floor or anything. He no, because he still smiled and you know, you know, because like I'm the daughter, so I know how to talk with him so that uh, he's not mad. Right. Right. Okay. Oh well, that sounds a good beginning. Yeah. Um. So during the meditation, um, since yesterday, this, what I told you with my body is happening again. So that was going on a lot. Um, so like my attention was a lot there and then, um, yeah, some thoughts and a lot of silence. Yeah. Good. Wow. You know what I was just saying to Brett about how how a connection happens, you know? So I can say for you too, maybe I think you already know this, but gradually over the last period of time and the fact that you come into these meetings pretty much regularly um, and you always contribute something, this also creates between myself and you a kind of connection, you know? And this is, I think, a very important thing. And we're going to talk later more about this connection between the student and the teacher. But it's what's happening, I think, um, in the Open Sky House and in my meetings is a bit different from the regular kind of teacher-student. That's not really the right word. You know, It's more like the guru and somebody who is searching for truth. You know? So it's a much more kind of serious story, I would say, because, um, you know, we all grow up um, with teachers, you know, it's a little bit different. And we'll discuss a bit later what, what this difference is. Uh, okay. I mean, you must have a lot of teachers at your sports uh, practice and your, your uh, university classes and all this. You probably piles of teachers. Yeah. And you don't have the same connection to them as you have to me, you see, because we have a different kind of connection. Yeah, totally. Yeah. So. Yeah. Good. Okay. You want to share any more? Um, not right now, maybe later. 
Ah. Okay, good. Maybe you could make it down to our celebration in Spain? Yeah, nice I was to have you there. just thinking about it. If you quickly get get tickets, you might get quite cheap tickets. Sometimes they have very cheap tickets, as long as you do it two or three weeks before. I don't know the times exactly, but uh, and with this this storm in Valencia and you know the sort of tragedy of quite a few people getting killed and so on. At the moment, we don't have so many guests coming to our guest house. And so it may be that the plane fares are reduced because of that. You know, they want to make it cheaper to attract tourists to come there. I don't know, really. But, uh, and as you've got, still got your father on your side, you might be okay for a couple of tickets. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I was thinking about coming, so. Oh, good. And you might be the first person to join our international community, you see. Well. <laughs> okay. Anyway, nice talking to you. Okay. Maybe I I have a little chat with Nora. I'd like to welcome Nora to our Zoom meetings. She's somebody we met about a year ago, and um, she came with us to India. And that was uh, that was in January of this, actually this year in January she came with us to India, and um, and then she completely evaporated. She completely disappeared, and um, three days ago she suddenly showed up again, and now um, amazingly she's uh, she's deciding to spend a whole month with us and maybe the rest of her life. Who knows? Is that right? Yeah. I mustn't say too much. I have to be yeah. a good boy with, with, with you. We don't <laughs> want to upset you. Yeah. 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 I mean, it's still hard for me to find words for what is happening because it's like... Um, I mean, most of my life I was just searching for being safe and secure. And this was defined by being someone, having a job. My mommy wanted me to, to be safe here in Germany, to, to be a good girl, to have her A-levels, to have a good academic um, grade and job. And so I did all this for a very long time and I realized that that's not me but I just I I was just too afraid of letting go of this just too much fear and when I was I mean I you know I had I practiced Buddhism I had teachers whatever and I had my spiritual path, no question, but never that deep um, that it started last year. But that was the reason why I was even more running away because I was scared like shit. I, I thought it was really like standing at a cliff and thinking if you jump, you won't be caught by no one. So... <laughs> Yeah. So this is your world, darling. You live in a world when you jump, nobody catches you. Yeah, exactly. But what 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 you what you don't realize is you're quite a cute young lady, and probably somebody would jump and catch you. You see, you're definitely <laughs> worth catching. So probably somebody would appear and catch you. You see, so yeah. you don't have to worry. The life works in another way. Yeah, but anyway, and this is what what's happening now because um yeah i disappeared the last time for i think now nine months because i got accepted for um a second studies um midwifery to become a midwife and i thought finally this is now after my big life crisis something which really matches my my heart and i can i can do 
a beautiful job, helping people this life, serving life somehow. Yeah, and then I was on Wednesday just sitting at my desk because I was studying like crazy until late in the night and I just realized there was like a block inside of me. I, I thought I can't anymore. I can't. And then um, I I got invited to the satsang. But I mean, I th I think the last months I was always invited, but I really rejected this. I was There was so much resistance because, yeah, there was just fear. And because I wanted to, I said, I decided now for this study, this is a good thing. It's something for my heart and I go for this. So, and then I don't know. And then there was right away this feeling and they, I thought I have to go to the satsang because I watched the, the satsang from the week before. And then there was a tremendous I don't know, connection. There was, again, this, I mean, that was there before, but it was so strong that I couldn't resist coming. And then, I don't know, something happened. It's now this other part. I always say there's like two people or whatever inside of me. And this one who was always saying, no, it's not safe, go back, run away, was always stronger. And now it somehow changed. And I really not think about, but I, it will happen that I will stop and that I will quit this. It's, it's, a, it's a contract also with a clinic. So my studies. And I just can't do this anymore. And because I understood that deeply inside i know that it's it's always about being someone or having something from which i earn money to be safe in this world and with a good job on top but i know that it's it's not about that and i finally want to really serve this life and i want to give it a chance that i can make the experience that i fall and that i that there is life which yeah we i've already appointed somebody to stand outside your room every night ready to catch you <laughs> yeah i have someone here yeah good anyway i mean i think what you're describing is is probably very much important you see because unfortunately, the conditioning that every human being gets as it's growing up, okay, it's nice to be a baby. And I think you can relax about quitting your, your um, training because actually in the end, babies pop out anyway, you know. Of course, it's nice if there's some friendly person to pick them up and smack their bum or whatever they do nowadays. But um, they manage themselves, you know. Babies are pretty amazing. And um, so, yeah, it, it was a good choice. Actually, you probably could be a good midwife. But when this thing happens, as you described, you know, you can't really explain to any friend what happened this week, you see. But you can't also not do what you're doing. You had to come to this meeting because something was touching you inside. And when you came to the meeting, so far, you haven't been able to leave. You've been here, I don't know, four or five days. So this is not something to be understood in the mind, you see. Mm -hmm. And if and you try so to explain yeah. it to any ordinary person, mm -hmm. they won't understand why you would possibly give up such a good possibility to go and stay with a load of strange people. You know? mm -hmm. So this, what to say, you know, the, the fact is that life works in another way. And actually, in this house, there is a very strong energy. The other day, there was somebody else here. Uh, in fact, they spent the whole week here doing a transformation week. And it seemed that this was the perfect place for this particular person. It was a woman, actually. And today, I was saying to Indira, well, what happened to that woman? I thought she, this was her place. And, and now she disappeared already for some time. 
I mean, Dio said, I don't know, I don't know, she's just gone, you know, I don't know. So, so, and then Indira said, well, maybe she's just too afraid of love, you see. Love is very scary. Mm -hmm. It's one of the most scary things, you see. Because if you really experience love, you can't be in your mind. Therefore, love and mind and thinking don't go together, you know. The more you are thinking and the more you're in your mind, the less love you're going to experience. And equally, the more you experience love, and here in our community we experience a lot of love in every moment of the day, doing very ordinary things but having fun with it and feeling a very deep deepness inside ourselves, which is what we could call love, not romantic love of I love you, but another kind of love, which probably is more to do with a real love. And this this is actually scary. The thing that's scary is the feeling of your mind not being able to handle the energy of this other thing called love. You know? And at the moment, you're surrendering to that other energy called love. And that's very beautiful. And everybody's happy you're in the house. And we'll together see what, what comes out of it. You know? And uh, later, the right moment, you'll have to deal with the, the part that you left, yeah? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Good. Okay. So welcome. Yeah. Good. Okay. <clears throat> so I think I'm going to read this text. So I particularly actually uh, chose this text for Aditi and uh, a bit for Jaya, because Aditi and Jaya are both, uh, let's say, more mature than other people. They've been involved in the spiritual world for quite a long time. And as far as I can feel, they both have great potential. But um, some months ago, Jaya wanted to kind of uh, stop coming here, stop having me as her teacher. And um, I don't remember exactly what she was going to do. But anyway, and now we have Aditi planning the same project. And I find this something that both of you need to really consider more seriously than the letters I got from you suggest, you know. Because um, to do another course, we just talked now to Nora, I don't think this is actually valuable at your age. You know, What would be valuable at your age is what you're already doing, which is deciding to live in presence. And whatever you're already doing, I know you're both teaching and doing therapy and so on together, and I'm sure you're not together, but separately. And I'm sure you're both very good at doing that. And the thing that's going to make you super good at doing that is to become present. So going off and learning some new stuff, I mean, I think this is a really dumb idea. So I tell you both now, and uh, maybe we get a chance to talk directly sometime. So the question that was asked, it is said that the yani breathe yana into others through the power of his silence, that words are not necessary for him. How does the yani enlighten his disciples? So this is a super good question, actually. And this question, unfortunately, is very little understood in Europe. And therefore, in Europe, because they have a completely wrong idea, they think everything is working through the mind. They don't actually want to have a teacher because they don't see any reason to have a teacher. Why do I need a teacher? I can go on the internet. I can listen to different teacher every night. I can work out my own teaching and I can get all the benefits from all that. And so why would I need a teacher? Very common attitude. And what is actually behind that for many people is that they have a terrible relationship with their father. Uh, in, in Nora's case, for example, I think her father left home when she was three, was it? Something like that, I think. Doesn't matter. So many people have a very bad relationship with their father, and therefore they project 
that energy onto the to the guru. And of course, this is the pity because then it makes it extremely difficult to have a good relationship with the guru if you're always treating him out of your psychological issues with your own father. But this is uh, very, very common and, um, and it doesn't work well, of course. So then Ramana's answer, his bodily presence creates a natural force field of mental quietness in the vicinity. So this is, this is it, you see. The guru is not somebody who's just going to tell you that two plus two is four. His role is completely different. His role is to put you in touch, to give you a great longing for something that is your nature. Right? Nothing really very special. It's your nature. You always had this place. You lost contact to it as you were growing up, as you were unfortunately being conditioned by people that told you how much they loved you and the society itself. So this has got to be changed if you want to come back to yourself. If you want to come to your true nature, then you have to get some support. You have to get some help. And the, the best possible help is not reading books or going on the internet and listening to, you know, 10 different teachers and then making up your own uh, um, teaching or something. Um, what's the most important thing is to meet a human being running around on this planet who, when you meet him, you feel very touched. And what you realize is that this person has achieved something that you haven't achieved. So I remember, you know, now it's 50 years ago, I, I went to India and I met, uh, I met Osho, you see. So I was 30 years old. I was uh, a bit lost. I wasn't very happy inside. And I was meeting one of his disciples in Japan, and he told me, you know, go and see Osho, go and see Osho, you see. I said, no, 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 I'm not interested in that, that kind of silly stuff. You know. But then uh, sometime later, I found myself in the ashram. In those days, he was giving a talk every morning. I went to his morning talks. I sat with maybe a thousand people. The ashram said 2,000, but probably it was more like 1,000. Anyway, it was a lot of people sitting in this big hall, Osho would come in and sit in a chair on a platform and he would make the most beautiful talks. And sometimes he would tell us, you know, I'm only talking to bring you to silence. And I never really understood that. You know, I was middle-class English guy. I didn't really understand what he's talking about. Why are you talking to bring me to silence? You know? And of course, Ramana Mahashi is extremely well known for being somebody who spent a lot of time in silence and the people around him spent then a lot of time also in silence around this man who would sit uh, in silence for hours, days and so on, weeks on end. And what was actually happening clearly, and I've experienced this in Osho's ashram, I've experienced it with my own teacher, uh, Papaji, and I can experience this actually in my meetings with you guys. It's very beautiful, actually, that there is this natural force field. And we all have this. It's not that the guru has it and you don't have it. The whole effort of the guru is to bring you on a journey so that you come to the point where you realize there is no difference between the guru and you. You see, fundamentally, we are all one. So our mind doesn't tell us that. We need some other way to come to discover that. And the way it's been working uh, in, in the East, because they are, they're a bit more expert about this, is by having a, a guru, having somebody who knows that space, that natural space, you see. 
Anyway, he goes on to say that science has made the observation that if an adequate length of insulated copper wire is repeatedly wound around an iron truncheon, I think a truncheon is a, like a piece of steel, a piece of iron, and then electricity is passed through the wire, iron filings, that's little bits of metal, placed near the truncheon are attracted to it. So you can't see anything with your eye. You can't see anything with the naked eye by, we, by means of which this magnetized iron is able to influence the iron filings, yet in fact it happens. So most of us have been in school where we've done some kind of experiment like that. So we know exactly how it works. And he's saying, likewise, the invisible waves of Yana radiating off the mindless one, the guru, spontaneously affect those around him, whether they are aware of it or not. Sensitive minds become aware of it. Just like iron filings are quietly sucked towards the magnetized iron bar, the Yarni's yarn silent influence introverts the mind and facilitates its submergence or adoption in the beingness of the self. Very beautiful, yeah. Once the initial right experience has been gained in vicinity of the Yarni's presence, thereafter, as a result of incessant practice, the seeker understands that the state of extroversion is a departure from the natural state and that effortlessly maintained thought free, free and um, sleepiness free subjective consciousness is the natural state. You see, very, very clear. And this is the possibility for every human being. And the thing that makes it tremendously easier is if you are lucky enough to attract a guru into your, into your life who knows this space, okay, who's living in that space. It is only then that he reaches the formless realm of indestructible peace. So I think everybody in this meeting tonight is wanting the, exactly that, yeah? We want to live in our natural state and our natural state allows us to live in peace and in love and in freedom and in presence. All this together brings us also into presence. Note that all this is from the seeker's point of view only. The yani cannot be aware of others to help. So, you know, Ramana always said there's, there aren't any others. There's no others. Nor is he necessarily even aware that he is bringing about all this. It all merely happens by the power of the presence the power of the presence, you see. And I can say that recently a few people have been kind enough, like Brett did earlier in the meeting, a few people have uh, kind of thanked me for this kind of radiating energy that goes on around John David. But the truth is, maybe this is a bit funny for you, the truth is, I have no idea about that. I just think I'm a funny old English guy, and I have no clue about this energy field around me, you see. So this is also a bit of a joke, you see. And, and so um, this is all happening in the nature, you see. This is all some natural phenomenon. You don't need something here. It's something 
that comes from our natural state, from our being. It's our being, not our mind. I feel no such magnetic effect in Bhagwan's presence. What fault I, have I committed, right? So some of you I know, because I can see you here on the screen, I know some of you often feel the energy field around John David, and that's why you choose to live in the house. That's why you've chosen maybe to live here for quite a few years now, and you have clearly been getting a slowly a benefit from that energy field. And this energy field is not just now held by John David, but it's held by everybody who lives in our community. It's very beautiful. It's even held by, by the house we live in. There's a certain energy held in, the, in this house. They have a beautiful old 17th century mansion, and it also holds a certain energy. When we first came here 20 odd years ago, when it was empty, I already felt the fantastic energy of this place. I was completely excited the first time I came in because I immediately could feel the incredible energy of this old house, 200 years old. And had, it had had an interesting family living here and you know, a lot of love had happened here and life had happened here and blah, blah, blah. So Bagman then says, I have already said that it requires sensitivity of mind. Never, nevertheless, your inability to feel, it does not diminish its effectiveness. You may not feel the potency of the Yani's silent influence, yet it is there and it's helping you, regardless of your opinions, you see. So this is anyway working. When we come together in uh, retreats, we usually end up with a mixture of people that lives, live with John David and people who don't know John David at all, who come as a guest. You come into this retreat and um, very quickly, we kind of melt together. And the people who are completely new to this um, group of people very quickly get completely touched and completely part of this the holding of this energy field. So this is all happening very naturally. It's all very normal. And I think it's rather wonderful, actually. So this is something I would like to talk about tonight. Um, and I would like to point out that in my opinion, the, the, the guru has several different tasks, yeah? But I would say, the probably the most important task is that he is able to touch you in a very deep way. So for example, Nora, after nine months, God, I mean, she wants to learn about babies, nine months, she made her own, uh, her own uh, situation. Yeah? She came here after nine months. And clearly, there's some kind of energy that has brought her here. Papaji, in the last few years of his life, when he was in his 80s, maybe about, probably about 84 years old, um, he shared with somebody that after all these many, many years of sharing with people, he realized that the only thing he had to do was to show up physically in the meeting. He, he should go to the meeting, he sits down in the meeting, there are people come to meet him. And if there is somebody in that meeting who is ready, something happens between Papaji and that person. And he said that, you know, towards the end of his life, he, he, he'd come to realize that all the other things, you know, talking, teaching, discussing, answering people's questions and so on, all these things, of course, are all part of the work, part of the job. <clears throat> but he came to realize that the essence was this essence of simply being there. And the energy field around Papaji was enormous. And this energy field would reach out into the crowd, maybe 100 people. And 
maybe somebody would get touched and come and uh, come to the front and, and sit with Papaji. And then very often something would happen and that, that person would kind of explode. So this is, uh, in a way, the essence of the spiritual work. Maybe somebody would like to talk about that a bit. Bhavati? Yeah. Um, I must say I'm very touched from this, what you read uh, just in the beginning from uh, Ramana, because it is totally what I experienced since I'm with you. And also, uh, when Indira had her happening, I could also feel when I was just sitting next to her, I've described it always like everything falls at the right place. So there is nothing nothing to do, nothing to want. And even more touched, I'm also from that you don't need, what they always say, you need to do. When you met your guru, he will do. And it's not that he is really doing it, no? but just what you describe with all these words is what I experience all the time. And uh, when I'm here in Spain, I could feel also last year when you and Indira came, there was a difference. Even when you are up there and you are in the garden or however, you can feel it then more in the, in the difference right. than if you are right. not here. Right. Right. And uh, for myself, I can also say that this quietness, I was totally touched or how, how how Ramana said, like it's just like a breathing you bring into the cycle. That's how I really experienced it. Right, right. And now I feel this place so on my own, but I can still feel when you come or when Indira is uh, next, I can also feel it more more strongly maybe, or more easy, or or more uh, like we are the same, or how, it, how to describe right. it. And also what you're also begetting a bit, Pavati, is that, you know, you have this role in the kitchen, you know, kitchens are very special places, because when we're little, we like going to the kitchen to get yeah. a bit of yummy something, sweet, uh, I don't know, biscuit or ice cream or something as a kid. And it's also the place where we sort of hang out with mummy, yeah? Mm -hmm. And daddy doesn't really have a place to hang out unless you go to his tool shed or something or his gardening <laughs> shed. So, you know, we, as we grow up, we, we tend to have this sort of fairly sweet connection with mummy in the kitchen. Mm -hmm. in, in my case, you know, I can remember my childhood it was always raining outside the window, but inside we had a warm fire, we had a dog, and we had a mummy who would make some kind of uh, sweeties. You know, we used to make toffee, fudge, um, I don't know, I can't remember really. But anyway, the whole energy was very lovely, oh. you know, <laughs> and we all, we all wanted to come and be around mummy, you know. We were just hanging out, you know. And um, this is the same thing, you see, the same thing. And so now people come to you because you're in the kitchen and people come to you when they have some spare time, they end up in the kitchen, they have a cup of tea maybe, or mm -hmm. start talking to you. And they're also drawn by the same thing. The thing that you're telling about uh, John David and, uh, and Dira, you're, you can say this is happening also around you. So. So people who are maybe less advanced, they come also to you and they feel around you also a beautiful energy that supports them in their um, journey, you can say. And so and so and so on. And this is how it goes on, you see. So the guru is, the student becomes the guru later because the, the thing comes to a kind of conclusion, 
you know, when I was living with Papaji, I, I got the idea to interview people who had um, come to him um, and um, they had some kind of big opening. And I thought it would be interesting to hear their life story a bit and then to hear how their life has changed after having this strong opening around Papaji. So I interviewed quite a few people and I have this book. It's called Papaji Amazing Grace. It's the first of the um, Open Sky Press books. And in this book, you can feel this, this sudden realization, I'm the same as him. So you come as this little student, you know, this little guy doesn't really know very much. And there's this big guru sitting every morning, you know, giving a talk and people are all sitting very respectfully in front of him. And gradually, gradually, you get drawn in, you get drawn in. And then one day, like Arika, you realize you're the same as the, as the guru. There's no difference. See? So this is the process. Nobody is higher. Nobody is lower. We're all actually the same. This is our nature. Uh, <clears throat> but, of course, our conditioning has given us all kinds of stories. And uh, so it's nice that you feel something extra happening when uh, Indira comes, but other people are feeling something when they come to you, you see. You pass on from you, Indira passes on from her, and this is just a beautiful sharing that constantly can go on in a community like our community. And what, what Ramana is saying is that even if you don't really um, have an awareness about what we're talking, it's still working on you. So even if you were one of the people sitting in the room with Papaji and you weren't one of the people who were kind of ready and, and you, know, you didn't rush out to the front to sit with him, um, even if you spent many months just sitting quietly somewhere in the room, this energy field is anyway working. And this is a very beautiful thing that in a sort of, uh, how can I say, in, in a way where you can't really see it or understand it with the mind, there is a process happening in a very subtle way. And I think it was nice to, to, to hear what Brett said and what Nora said. And in a way, they're both being affected by, by something which they can't really talk about. And what is that? It's some kind of energy. It's some kind of energy, and this energy is very, very important. Yeah, and it's very nice to express uh, this um, this feeling. What what when they always said the guru is doing, as a guru, you know, when you find your guru, then the guru is doing the work, and you know, something like this. Right. But right. it's more clearly understood now um, how that works. It's right. not being doing, no? it's just more, it, it's a happen. It's being, just simply being, you know, yeah. if the guru, guru is a really a free guru, mm -hmm. he simply sits and, and you come into this field of energy and this supports you. And then you have to do your part of the work, which is, what the guru is suggesting for you, some kind of uh, practice, maybe. Yeah. Mm. Very nice. <laughs> yeah, good. Thank you. Okay. Okay, Shakti. Hey, hello. Hello, hello. It's Where are you? <laughs> oh, there you are. Hi. Okay. Yeah. It's uh, really touching what you um, read and also what you were talking with um, Parvati about. Um, because especially today, I had the feeling like something happened and something which I cannot put into words again. It was um, 
I think it started in the midday meditation we had today. And there suddenly was a great big energy um, in the stomach. And since then, I felt like a lot of a lot of tears coming, like in waves, every every few minutes or hours, and then it's then it's all all right, and then it comes again. But also, it feels like very sick. Some kind of like something's changing inside in the energy system, maybe. Yeah. It's really crazy day today. Like now I can the feel reality, a lot of energy in the heart area. I mean, the reality is anybody living in the modern society is basically sick <laughs> because they're not they're not living in their nature. They're not in their natural state at all. So I mean, of course, you can't walk around saying everybody's sick because everybody gets pissed off then. But this is actually the reality, you know, and you can find this sickness out for yourself. So in your case, when we first met you, I don't know, it was two months ago, maybe, uh, you were not really a very happy bunny. And you were obviously full of quite a lot of things that didn't make you feel very good. And later, when we got to know you a bit, you had told me, for example, that um, you always felt your father had no interest in you. And this was, I think, very painful for you. So <clears throat> that was a sort of negative field, yeah? So you, without your father maybe ever doing anything or ever saying anything that was particularly horrible to you, you nevertheless felt that he didn't really care and he didn't really give you the kind of attention that would nourish you. Um, so that was all without any talking. You just could feel that over the years. And in the same way, you've now come into this community. And probably the reason you've come here is because you feel a completely different kind of uh, energy field. You know? You've been attracted to this field of energy here in the, in, in the Open Sky House. And you're gradually over, the, I think you've been here now two or three weeks. As a as a resident, well, you, yeah, two weeks as a resident. You 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 you're now more and more getting the benefit of this energy field, which you had a sense about before, but now is beginning to kind of if you could say work on you or work with you, yeah. And this work is some kind of deep letting go. Actually, it's the deep letting go. For example of this feeling you have about your father, you know, that you have this feeling he didn't give you any attention and wasn't really interested in you, and you feel a pain from that. You know? But uh, I don't know if that's the true story, but that's the story which you've got inside you, and that story is going to relax when you live in this energy field, you see? So in this way, Things like suddenly crying a lot can be perfectly, uh, definitely happening in this community. In fact, usually there's at least one person every day having some kind of emotional drama. And this is very much part of our daily life. And when it happens to somebody, everybody else tends to just naturally give support for that. So that's also very beautiful and helpful. You know? So don't worry about crying. I mean, it's it's okay to cry. And you're not probably doing the crying. The crying is coming and just doing you. So you just say, thank you for crying. You know, it's all right. And you probably are not even clear yet whether you're crying out of sadness or crying out of um, happiness. You see, it could be either. Maybe it even is yeah, at both well, I don't know and they change. Like uh -huh. mm. Yeah, probably. It's just like a strong energy releasing from right. my eyes. I don't right. know what it is. Well, it may be that you discover here something that you have a sense that you want, that you like, you know. This is something attractive and it 
brings you towards this attractive thing, which actually is all about yourself in the end. Yeah. You can also be crying for the years you didn't live in that kind of uh, friendly energy field. Yeah. Okay, anything else? Hmm. Where are you sitting? Because I quite like that painting behind you. Oh, it's in the in the honey studio. Oh, it's in the honey studio. Oh, right. Oh, I remember that. Yeah. Well, it's a nice painting, that one. I don't know who's the artist, but it's quite nice. Maybe later you could find out the name of the artist and send me a text with the name. Or somebody else could send me a tape. Okay, good. Okay. Okay, so there's nobody seems to be rushing. I'd like to uh, talk a little bit about what's happening down in Spain. Uh, most of you know that um, we bought this house, I think it was two years ago, about two years ago. And since that time, we've been renovating it. We've had uh, four or five of the community living there and um, working in the garden, working in the house. Uh, building new rooms on the balconies, and to uh, we've we've in, <clears throat> we've arranged to buy yurts. These Mongolian, uh, uh, how can I say? Uh, they're kind of tents, but uh, anyway, the the name is yurt. And we've been buying this from somebody in the south of Spain who makes them very beautifully, and. Our idea, which is turning, has turned out very beautiful, is to build a bathroom so that the bathroom is outside. So if you rent the yurt, you stay inside the yurt and you have chairs and a refrigerator, you have air conditioning and you have a bed, of course, and then you go out to the bathroom and outside is in the garden. And so you, you have a palm tree maybe, you have some bushes, you have some flowers, and so you're out in the nature when you want to go to the bathroom. And we weren't sure how that would be for people, uh, but everybody has been very touched. People really like this experience of being able to go out into the outside in the garden to be in the bathroom. So this is one of the particular things we've done in this community place. And gradually we've had different volunteers there and now after, well, we, we had rented the house before, so I think we've had the house maybe eight years, seven or eight years altogether. And now that we've renovated it, we have the idea that now would be the time to create a beautiful international community there. Uh, the garden is wonderful. We're three minutes from the Mediterranean. Um, the, the sea where we are is a nature reserve so when you go swimming there you find it's got a lot of uh, fish and so on and behind us we have a mountain it's not quite Aranachula but it's got a bit the feeling of Aranachula right behind the house and around that hill there is also a nature reserve so it's a very particularly beautiful place and we have, the, I have the strong intention and strong feeling this is the right place to make an international community. So um, we, we're, of course, encouraging some Spanish people to come, but actually we're very happy to have uh, Dutch people, Italian people, even English people can come. So um, this is on the uh, 23rd and 24th of November in two weeks' time. 
So anybody listening or if you've got friends who are kind of interested in something like that, encourage them to come. The weekend is completely free. There'll be some seminars. There'll be a concert on Saturday. Um, and, um, well, I'll give a meeting on Friday to start the thing off. And um, we probably show a film or two. In fact, it'll be a lovely weekend. So if you have any friends or if you yourself are interested in this, then maybe you, you reach out with it. Yeah. And the week after that weekend, just for the cost of food, we're offering a one week, what we call transformation week, where we have certain uh, program every evening that introduces um, the spiritual work. And um, uh, so you can also stay the whole week and be part of this first transformation week. So if you're interested, then contact your Indira or um, or Radha. Radha's just disappeared. Radha or Indira about that weekend and about that week. Uh, we're very lucky to have Kailash coming to translate for us so that we can talk to Spanish guests. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and I'll see some of you on Friday. We'll have a public meeting here in the house. And as I was saying before, um, you can come into, if you contact your own, he will um, explain how you can come into the meeting as if it's a Zoom meeting. Is that right, Om? Maybe you can, could, would you like to explain that? Can you explain it uh, right now, actually? So you mean how it works to connect? On yeah, how can somebody um, connect into that meeting? What would they have to do? They go to Facebook or X? Uh, pretty, it's pretty easy. Either you can go to John David's YouTube channel or to X channel or to the Instagram or Facebook. And um, the live stream will be um, showing there. And in the, there's also a link where you can join the Zoom meeting. And also, we will send out an email probably tomorrow where there's also links to the live stream and the Zoom meeting. So it's very simple. Right. You just click the link and meet him. Right, right. Good. And so anybody who has, if, if you haven't given us your email address, if you like to get this information, and if you'd like to get our monthly newsletter, then you could send your uh, email address to Indira, and then you'll automatically get this kind of practical information. Yeah. Good. Okay. Thank you.